Hi folks, Canadian Prepper here. So today I want to talk about protest and this is a message for people who are out there protesting right now. I used to protest. I wore the bandana. I was in the mix. I was in the fray. But I learned something in life and it's that you should never give more energy to who you perceive to be your enemy than your enemy gives to you. What do I mean by that? Well, if you're spending 95% of your time out there waving a placard, trying to change people's minds, um, you have to ask yourself how much energy and time is being put into oppressing you, if that's what you believe. Now, I'm likely going to upset some people in this video if they don't watch it all the way through and if they don't understand really that what I'm trying to say in this video is trying to empower you, okay? And this is how I'm going to empower you today. Anybody who is passionate enough to truly go out there and peaceful protest for a cause, anybody who's willing to sacrifice their time for a cause which they perceive to be justified and greater than themselves has the capability to be successful in this society more than the average person. I need to say that again. If you are out there using your time protesting somebody, your time could be better used somewhere else to get you into a position where you have more power and influence in order to affect change in the world because I absolutely can guarantee you right now that you are not going to change anybody's minds number one through force you're going to change them through action and I don't mean going and smashing a window and you know doing stuff like that uh, you're going to change people's minds by showing them by showing them your work ethic by showing them what you can do for yourself by taking care of yourself that's how you affect change in the world because listen this is what really irritates me about the whole Illuminati thing okay and I've realized this about a year ago I realized I had an epiphany and it was that people are kept in line because they tell themselves that that which makes the people who are in control right now, the people who are in power, when you call those people evil, what are you saying? You're basically saying that I don't want to get to their level because I'm going to be evil. So you basically make it impossible or you basically put up a barrier so that you never get into that position because to you, being elite, being wealthy, having power, is evil so their position is secured you see what I'm saying so what I'm trying to say is that stop viewing success as inherently negative or inherently evil I, I used to have this belief that you don't make it to the top by being nice now you definitely have to be a good businessman or businesswoman in order to strong arm your way to the top but I think that the people who truly get to the top are the people who provide something of value to others in very, very large amounts. I mean, look at any of the major corporations in the world. They provide value to people, okay? So what I'm saying is multifold. If you really want to affect change in the world, I know what Gandhi said, and I know it's a cliche in a lot of ways, and it's a pull yourself up by your bootstraps argument, which is not to say that you don't face, that the challenges you face are not, you know, the same as somebody else. There's going to be people who grow up in the hood or grow up in the projects who have a much, who have a lot more in their way in terms of reaching success. But what I also want you to know is that that can be the thing that actually makes you strong enough to eventually become really successful. 
being born with a silver spoon in your mouth is not it, it's not it, it seems like it's a leg up okay because all you're seeing is the decadence and you're just seeing the ease at which those people have to deal with the their material needs in life but what you don't understand is that motivation ambition passion these are all things birthed from hardship I can't remember the exact quote, but it was something like the fact that in three generations, wealth is turned into rags because the first generation, you know, works really hard, accumulates wealth. The second generation maybe holds on to it. And the third generation squanders it because they never had to earn it themselves. So what I'm saying is that if you really want to change your communities, you need to focus on your community. You need to not just spend all your time uh, protesting things because really if you want to talk about how you control people it's to get them to waste all their time on something which there's no return on that investment think about it what's the best return on your investment going to be you get a tv show canceled because it was determined that it was you know offensive at one point in time is that going to change your life in any way do you really think you can force people to have their minds and their perceptions changed? No, you can't. You cannot do it. You can. You can, you know, force people to have to, you know, hire certain people and stuff like that. Okay. But do you really want those jobs anyways? There was a time when I was coming out of university, I was looking for a job. And I noticed there was all these government job offerings, employment equity jobs, they call them. And they were all like menial positions that... Yeah, it was a leg in the door, I guess you could say, but into what door and, and, you know, where was the exit after that? You know, what, how high could you really go by going in on one of these entry level positions? So, I don't know, man. I guess what I'm trying to say is that there's a lot of people out there protesting who have a lot of potential. You have a lot of potential to change your life in such a way that you become the change that you want to see in the world. And the thing that's preventing you from doing that is this belief that every rich person is evil and that you know everybody but you is greedy okay and we have to get out of that mentality if you really want to change things now again I'm not saying that injustice doesn't exist I'm not saying that I'm not saying that there doesn't need to be changes made to certain aspects of the system that would allow an authority figure to use excessive use of force like we've seen in the case of George Floyd. But how much energy are you really going to invest if everybody focused on themselves in their own communities, change would actually happen. But you see, change doesn't happen when you get a hand out. Even a hand up is not what you think it is. It's, it's patronizing. Okay, a hand up only gets you so far. It's like giving a man to fish is actually doing you a disservice in the long run. And that's how politics is played. They keep people dependent on them for votes. And you guys know that I get more flack from the right on this channel than I do the left. Okay, so you can't come on here and say, oh, I'm some right wing shill or whatever the case might be, or crypto uh, right wing or crypto left wing. I'm just a guy who's trying to figure it out and I think that I've figured it out because I spent 10 years of my life rebelling against the system and it wasn't until I became passionate about something, something that I enjoyed and I started directing my efforts towards improving myself, that is when things started to change for me. It wasn't pointing the finger at other people and trying to strong arm them into feeling a certain way. If people are gonna be prejudiced assholes, then that's what they're gonna be. You're not gonna change them. A law is not gonna change that. It may change how they present, but it's not really gonna change their underlying feelings. And do you really want that? You know, do you really want to not know who's who? Do you really want to have to push all those people to the point where they have to hide their true feelings and then they can't be outed anymore? So, all I'm saying is that, yes, there's a time for, for protest, but don't put as much energy into it as they're putting into you because then you're losing. You're losing big time. And I'm telling you guys, I know you don't believe me when I say this, 
but I was more, all the stuff that people are doing right now, I was on the avant-garde of all of this years ago. And I just realized, not that there isn't necessarily a very small group of people who, by and large, make a lot of the decisions which affect a lot of our lives. I'm not saying that there's not a lot of wealthy people who are pulling the strings up there. That's happening, okay? But what you when you demonize that, you run the risk of ensuring that you're never going to get out of your position in life and that you're never going to reach that level so you can exact the change that you want to see because you perceive it as evil. So you set up a wall which basically secures their position because they know they're not going to have any competition because you're this idealist down here shouting at them saying everything you're doing is evil and wrong so I'm just going to stay in my position waving placards while you drive by in your new car that you buy every few weeks. Now I'm also not saying that you should just chase monetary or financial success either. I'm just saying that follow your passion, okay? And those of you who have that passion, there's something about an idealist. You really have to be an idealist to be truly entrepreneurial and truly successful, I believe. And you have to have a really hard work ethic, like a super hard work ethic. My problem throughout my entire life has been I was terrible with money, but I had a really hard work eth work ethic. Like in the top 10%, I would say, of anywhere I go, I'm in the top 10% of hard workers. That doesn't mean I work the smartest. Okay, that was one of the problems is I never worked smart, and I'm still not really working that smart. I'm still a perfectionist. I'm still trying to do it all myself. But I'm learning what my weaknesses are. That's the most important thing. And I truly think... I truly think, guys, and this is coming from the bottom of my heart, I don't have to make a video like this. You know, it, it's, it does me no good to make a video like this. But I truly think that if you take all that energy that you put into protesting and you turn that into something constructive in your own community, change is going to happen so fast <clears throat> and then you're going to see who your real friends are. Then you're going to see... All of a sudden, those people who you thought were on your side and who were supposedly for the cause, all of a sudden, now their jobs and their occupations are under threat because you're actually improving your position in life. You're actually succeeding and your community is getting better. That's why the only movements that ever get shut down are the ones that really change things, the ones that really have an impact. Those are the movements that get shut down, not the ones that get everybody in a tizzy and, you know, get everybody out there in the streets and shouting and wanting, you know, whatever kind of legislation, idealist legislation. Okay, fine. Yeah, I've made a video about why I think police budgets need to be scrutinized. Okay, we've talked about that. Now what? How much of your life are you going to give to that before you're just empowering your enemy? You know, a lot of people need to, re and I'm not saying that they're my enemy necessarily. I'm just saying if that's how you're perceiving it, if that's a start for you to get into this mindset, then that's how we, that's where we have to start with you perceiving it as my enemy is getting a leg up on me. Okay. By me spending all my time, you know, protesting in the streets. I'm not saying they're your enemy. I don't think they're your enemy. That's the thing. But that's where we have to start with a lot of people. A lot of people have never read The Art of War. And you never, ever want to go up against a superior opponent head on. You never want to do that. That's the whole point of fourth generation asymmetrical anything. It's so that you're not uh, confronting them with their strengths. Where you're, when you're weak you got to appear strong and when you're strong you got to appear weak and a lot of people are just running into the machine and making the machine bigger and bigger and bigger <clears throat> you know if you're a bunch of ragtag anarchists and you're going up against the like well-oiled riot police who do you think is going to win and who do you think is going to get a bigger budget next year so you just embolden the system even more a smart person would 
kind of go into the shadows and study and work and build up themselves and, and build up a bankroll. And then you get into yourself into a position where you can actually bring forth the change in a way which is legal. Now, I know a lot of idealists will say, well, yeah, you know, you, you can't do anything within the confines of what's legal. Then it's not rebellious. It's not revolution. Well, I think that on a long enough timeline, and I know it was, I think it was Obama who said, or <clears throat> maybe he regurgitated, that the arc, uh, the moral arc of the universe is long, but it bends towards justice. And I do believe that that's true. I do believe that on a long enough timeline, everything is going to fall into place if we don't destroy ourselves first. I do believe that. I do believe right now we are in a transformative time. We are on the cusp of a technological transformation which is going to change everything. And it could go into a dystopian world first before it gets better. It may. But just remember, if you're thinking that every single tool that who you perceive to be up top is evil, then you're not going to be able, you're not going to allow yourself to use those same tools. And then you're forever stuck in this position of just ranting on the internet, getting nowhere with your life. So, you know, all I want to see is people have an awareness of the inherent frailties of the system, to be mindful of the fact that you are a part of nature and that you, you do have a lot of vulnerabilities which are masked by the technology that we employ in our everyday lives to keep us aloft and just to be prepared because this transformative process is not going to be pretty, okay? Because a lot of people do not and they're going to refuse to understand what I'm saying right now. This kind of video is only going to enrage them as it would probably have enraged me 10 years ago. It probably would have enraged me because I was so idealistic that when you're, a, when you're an anarchist, <clears throat> you think that the only way is to smash the system. You think that the only way is to destroy everything and build from the ground up. But you start to realize that practically speaking, that's just not feasible. That it, it's the odds of it happening, number one, are not feasible. Even if it did happen, what would be what it would be replaced by would probably be worse. Actually, it would be worse, okay, especially in the short term. Um, so you got to think about all these things. But these are things when you're young, you don't want to accept that reality because you feel like you're selling out. Well, there's a great quote. There was this movie about, I can't remember, it was about some punk, some punk guy. It was a comedy, I believe. And the dad, who was like this, you know, uptight kind of distinguished Ivy League type lawyer and the son was like some punk with the spiked hair and all this stuff and he told his son he's like look son I didn't sell out I bought in and when it comes down to it that's probably going to be your best option I hate to say it because you're not going to smash the system and if you do smash the system what is going to be put in its place is going to suck even more okay and then you're going to realize that you are going to become that tyrant that you once resisted because a lot of this is projecting a lot of people who are you know uh, seeing all the negativity in the elites you're seeing it first in yourself and then you're projecting it it's not just just you're perfect and you know we're just the moral idealists down here and everybody who's successful is an asshole it's not how it works it's not so cut and dry so anyways guys i hope Hope you got something from this, you know. If it got you mad, maybe that's a good thing too because maybe that's the first stage in acknowledging that maybe something I've said here has substance. Let me know in the comment section below. Thanks for watching Canadian Prepper Out.